At 7.20 a.m. on August 17, 2016, a unique handful of young athletes and scholars, artists and socialites, musicians and scientists all walked into Olentangy Orange High School, set to go through the high school experience. Never before in a school so large, getting lost in the halls each week with the principal so strict and so tall, it would be hard for some to tell that those are the young men and women who sit in front of their screens today. After four years of happiness and sadness, four years of stress and anxiety, we almost had the ideal high school experience. Well, that all changed on January 20th of 2020, when the first life was lost to an invisible enemy and a long journey began. Our nation for the first time now stood toe to toe with an enemy who saw no color, an enemy who saw no politics, who saw no status in society, an enemy with nothing but the desire for souls. For some, the past months have been stressful and worrisome, for we stand face to face with an enemy who was no longer confined to the world news on our television screens, but instead on our front doorsteps, consuming parts of everyday life. Now, when you look back at American history, times of struggle and times of pain, people will call those valleys. So in a sense, a deep valley now stands before us in the form of an illness, the deepest void we've ever seen. So what do we do now? We do what we've done for the past 244 years. We build a bridge, we cross over it, and we keep it moving. Now I can hear people asking how. We've never lost over 100,000 people before in our lifetimes. We've never faced an enemy so difficult to contain, never faced an enemy that couldn't be defeated by a law or weapons of war. What do we do now? My simple question is this. Have you forgotten that December morning when bombs rained down on our heroes stationed at Pearl Harbor. They thought torpedoes and missiles could stop us. The whole world counted us out, but we still made it through. Lest we forget that sunny September morning when a new kind of hatred invaded our nation and murdered nearly 3,000 people. They thought planes could stop us, but we still made it through. Now, we didn't make it through by dividing ourselves. We didn't make it through by calling those we don't agree with demons or communists. We didn't make it through by brandishing our rifles and targeting government officials. We made it through when we were mature enough to look past our political parties, past our races, past our genders, and heard everyone's voice. We made it through when we finally understood that we are the United States of America. We are the authors of tomorrow. We are the descendants of hope, and we will get through this so long as we strive to get through it together. Class of 2020, tonight I call you to look at where you've been. Look at what you've come through. Look at who has helped you and who you've helped. Look at who has guided you and who you've guided. Fellow seniors, we have a story to tell, and it does not end with COVID-19. I call you tonight to look in the mirror and understand that you were not born into this world to watch it die. We were not born into this nation to watch it split, and we were not born into this life to be miserable and dwell on the things that we cannot do. That is not proof that we will not get confused. That is not proof that clear-cut answers will be provided to every question that we have. But it is ample proof that what we go through only will make us stronger. So as we continue to fight this battle and everyone that follows hereafter, let us remember that we will be able to climb every mountain, weather every storm, so long as we do so together. I close with the old spiritual we sing in my church called By and By. It says, By and By, when the morning comes. When all the saints have come and gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. And I cannot wait to reach that day with all of you.